non Super Bowl peeps. All right, perfect. We are live on Facebook and LinkedIn. I hope I was not the only one who didn't know the Super Bowl was today. And I probably was, but if you're a non Super Bowl uh, follower, <laughs> like me, then this is for you. Maybe you'll be here. We'll see. We'll see. So uh, I wanted to share, this is my alternative to the Super Bowl. I promise it'll be just as good. Um, I wanted, I'm live on both Facebook and LinkedIn, if you guys see me going back and forth. So I wanted to share something that I never thought I would be talking about publicly, because I never thought I'd get past this struggle, which is how I stopped my struggle with time management. And I was the queen of the struggle when it comes to time management. And I don't know about you, like, pop in the comments. Let me know if that's something you, you maybe do struggle with or you used to struggle with. But I always felt for years, for most of my professional career, I felt behind, overwhelmed, burned out. Um, I was just in constant struggle with it. And I didn't even know there was another way. And I, you know, everything changes when you make a decision. And I think with anything, sometimes we just reach a point in our lives where we're like, we're just fed up of feeling the way we do. And we get open-minded to the fact that maybe there's a different way to do this. And maybe it doesn't have to be, oh, this is going to be a short life because this monitor is about to die. We get open-minded to the fact that maybe it doesn't have to be the way um, the way that we're, oh, we're having trouble streaming to LinkedIn. Okay. We're just going to keep rolling with it. Uh, all right. We're just going to keep rolling with it. So anyway, Three things helped me finally end my struggle with time management. Number one, I made a decision. And that came because I saw other people being really successful the way I wanted to be and not struggling with time management. And that opened me up to the idea that maybe I didn't have to be either. So that was the first thing was I made, I got open-minded. And then as I got more and more examples, hey, Kayla, how are you? Um, as I got more and more examples of other women who were successful with their businesses and they weren't struggling with time management. Thank you. This is my non Super Bowl. This is for my non Super Bowl people because I didn't know the Super Bowl was tonight. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So I, I just made the decision and I got open minded to the fact that maybe it didn't have to be a struggle. And that started to change everything. It is literally making a decision that perhaps there's a better way. Hey, Brenna. Oh my gosh. I love you. Hey girl. Um, the second thing I did was I started to understand how my body worked and this changed my life. When I learned this, this literally changed my life. So here's the quick run through. And this is something I teach my coaching clients and it literally transforms their lives too, but it's so powerful. So as a woman, your hormones cycle every 28 to 30 days or so, right? We all know this. Men's hormones cycle every 24 hours. So it's interesting when you look at, I love biomimicry, like studying how our bodies mimic nature. I think it's so fascinating. And so if you look to nature, men's hormones cycle every 24 hours with the sun. So they have roughly the same energy level at different times throughout the day. As women, our hormones cycle every 28 to 30 days or so with the moon. Isn't that cool? Like, I love when I first found that. I thought, gosh, that's, it's just beautiful to me. It's so fascinating. But we live in a, basically a sun-based system where in a business world, you're expected to show up and have the same amount of energy and stamina, roughly the same amount every day. But as a woman, I mean, let me know for those of you. Yeah, Brenda, I mean, you're, you're commenting like you probably know this stuff because you help people with this, but like you don't have the same amount of energy every day. You'll find every week, you like, you'll have weeks where you feel super on. And that tends to be, yes, I'm going to, I'm talking about ovulating on LinkedIn. This is probably the first and only time I'll do this, but here we go. When you were <laughs> you're ovulating as a woman, you're super magnetic. Like you are on, that's a great time for your sales presentations. That's a great time to be doing videos. That's a great time to be like physical and in front of people. You've just got that like beautiful magnetic edge where people are like, Ooh, what did you like? What are you wearing today? And did you get your hair cut? And you didn't change anything, but you have that edge to you. And there's another week of the month. Uh, and that's when you're menstruating, where you probably don't want to be talking to most people. And you're naturally designed then to be more inward and to be literally shedding the things that no longer serve you. And when you can learn to embrace that and start to regulate your schedule around that as a woman and plan for like, okay, during that week for me, I'm going to be more, I'm going to be like looking at my programs and looking at my client list and deciding what do I want to change this next month? And 
what do I want to release? What have I been doing that's no longer serving me? But then in that, you know, in the week when I'm, when I'm ovulating, I'm going to be scheduling my sales presentations that week as much as I can. I'm going to be scheduling my pitches. If I've got a webinar or a masterclass, I'm going to do it then because I know it's just going to be that much easier for me. Uh, great resource on this, by the way, is the book Do Less by Kate Northrup. I highly, highly, highly recommend it, but it'll transform the way you manage your time as a woman. And we're just, we're just not taught this stuff. Hey, I've got, okay, Jessica coming in, wake up and read the labels. I love it. Helen. Hello, Tamika. I love it. I love it. I'm sharing how I finally stopped struggling with time management, which I never in a million years thought I would be struggling with. Let me know in the comments, do you guys struggle with time management? Like, is this something, do you feel like you crush it? Do you struggle with it? What's, what's your number one question too, when it comes to time management? I'm really curious. Hey, Tamika, I'm so glad you're here. Shavana, hey, love, how are you? We're doing a live both on Facebook, Facebook and LinkedIn and Instagram. So I'm kind of going back and forth here. So let me know as you're coming in, what were like, what are your biggest struggles when it comes to time management? And I'm, I'm not doing a super long live tonight because Jack's monitor is about to die, <laughs> but I'll, uh, I'll do a post maybe and answer some of the questions. Shavanna's saying not anymore. I love that. Yeah. And I mean, as a mom and entrepreneur running multiple businesses, I know that was probably an area where you really had to rewire your mindset. And then again, once you make that decision that it's not a struggle for you anymore, it's just then the things start to unfold to help you in that no longer being a struggle. And then the third thing is I, I stopped doing things that didn't matter. And that made a huge difference. And right before I had Jack, I remember looking at my business and saying like, okay, I'm about to have significantly less time. And I was working roughly like 60, 70 hour weeks before then. And I knew I was about to become a mom and I, I had to figure out a way to get stuff off my plate. And I looked at my business and stuff that was taking me, I was letting my work expand to 60 to 70 hours because that was the amount of time I gave it. Um, when I looked at what was actually making me money, I boiled it down to one day a week. It was one day a week of work. It was like eight hours. So I cut it almost into a 10th of what it was to make the same, like, right. Amazing. I mean, it was, it was incredible and it transformed my relationship with time. And then when I came back from maternity leave, I just did those things that were, <laughs> it was that one day of work and it was so much easier. And I actually have made more money every single month since coming back from maternity leave. I work like four hour days, most days, and it's been so easy. Um, I'm seeing Brennan saying time management offers me opportunities for growth. That's the perfect mindset with it. Yeah. Read that book. If you haven't do less, you'd be obsessed with it, Brenna. Um, Hey, Milton, how are you? And Shavanna saying so true. Yeah. So yeah. So those are the three things. So again, I made a decision. It was no longer a struggle for me. And that's because I saw examples of other women who were highly successful in business and it wasn't a struggle for them. So that opened my mind to Maybe it doesn't have to be for me. Number two, I understood how my body worked. I started to study how my body worked and I realized that I work better in a 30 day cycle and I'm naturally designed to do business in a 30 day cycle rather than a 24 hour cycle. That changed a lot. And then the third was I stopped doing things that don't make me money. And a big piece of that too was releasing the need to people please because I had to let go of projects and things that were that I was doing because I had made commitments to other people when I maybe didn't have such good intact boundaries as I do now. And so I had to have conversations that were hard and I had to step back from projects and not leave anything like in a lurch, but I had to talk with people and say, you know, I volunteered to do this to help you in your business. And I no longer can, like, it's just, I need to work with you on a transition plan out of doing this, but it's having that self love and that self respect to say, especially when you're a mom, a dad, you know, you're, juggling a lot of stuff. Like you have to be so, if you set such good boundaries around your time, you have to. And at the end of the day, you're the one who has to live your life. So why are you spending your time doing stuff? That's just so you think other people will be happy. Maybe if you let go of something in the moment, it'll disappoint someone in the moment, but you have to learn like you're not in charge of other people's feelings. Their experience is their own. And as long as you handle it with tact and with grace and you keep your boundaries intact, but don't leave people in a lurch, but, you know, clearly communicate if there's something that needs to be dropped or changed. Um, yeah, Joey's saying, how can you do a live video during the Super Bowl? You're on this live video during the Super Bowl, my friend. This is how I can do a live video during the Super Bowl is that you still show up. I love it. 
I, yeah, this is embarrassing. I didn't know the Super Bowl was tonight. That shows you my level of engagement with the sports world. Brynn is saying, honor yourself. Yes, 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 yes. And I used to be the worst with that. And it literally wreaked like physical harm in my body because my body, I was harboring resentment that I wasn't spending my time the way I wanted to. And I'm not available for that anymore. Yeah, best enjoy. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. So with that being said, my friends, um, send me a DM if you have questions on this or if you're struggling with your time management. And then I want to invite you to, I'm so beyond excited for this. And y'all may have seen my post um, on Instagram earlier today, but I've opened up the doors to 10K Club. And this whole thing has been literally like divinely inspired and downloaded. And I'm sharing a podcast episode this week that shares how I made one decision on December 26th of last year that transformed my entire life very fast, very fast. And one of the manifestations of that is I'm launching a program called 10K Club. And I am taking up to 20 women under my wing to help them achieve a 10K month in 90 days or less, but do it in a way that feels really good, that honors their natural, their body, their rhythms, how they're wired. That's really, it's about releasing limiting beliefs about what's possible for you. It's about starting to own that it's possible. And it's about learning to sell and acquire clients and run your business in a way that honors how you're naturally wired, which is so possible for you. And I've, trust me, if I can do this, anyone can. It's so amazing. Yeah, thank you so much, Brenna. I'm excited. Hey, I see Maduka joining. Nicole's joining. That's awesome. So guys, if you want to find out more about um, how to join in that, I've got five days until I'm closing it down, uh, closing down enrollment. And uh, I opened it up on Friday. We're 25% full. The women in there are just like dreams. They're absolute dreams. And uh, I would love for you to check it out if that feels, if that feels of service to you. So you can check it out at elisearcher.com slash 10k club. It'll give you the steps to apply. Would love to have you apply and share it too with if you've got a girlfriend who you know owns her own business or is in sales or a mom, wife, partner, friend, daughter. Thank you, Brenna. You've been a huge part of my journey. I love you so much. Um, I appreciate that. Yeah, share it with your friends, elisearcher.com slash 10k club, because that is a big piece of this is learning to leverage your natural design, your natural rhythms, how you're wired to achieve success in a much more effortless way. And you're going to hear it on the podcast this week, what happened for me financially when I learned to do this and what a big, like what a quantum leap it was and how quickly it happened and how easy it was too. So yeah, check it out. Send me a DM if you have questions and I'm going to let you guys go watch the Super Bowl or do whatever you're doing. All right. Lots of love. Thank you so much everyone who joined. Have a great night.